Hello and welcome to Investing on Purpose with DLP. This is really going to be a series on how impact investments and private real estate funds can help you do well while doing good. Before we get started, our disclaimer here, this is not a solicitation. We are an investment fund manager and we do have offerings that you can look into. We do advise you to check with your attorneys, your lawyers, uh, make sure you're doing your diligence before you invest in DLP or any other investment. I am Rich Delgado, the Managing Director of Structured Finance and Capital Partners at DLP. I started with the firm about five years ago. Before that, I spent about 30 years in structured finance and capital markets, primarily with two large public companies, which I helped grow to over 600 billion of mortgage servicing rights uh, together managed a lot of uh, different warehouse facilities and leverage finance and raised a lot of debt, had seven billion of financing facilities across 14 different lenders. And again, that's basically what I do here at DLP. I raise debt and equity for the company. So I work with high net worth individuals, family offices, registered investment advisors. I work with our uh, investment partner communities. And then I also work with our lenders that's getting financing for our loans that we make doing back leverage, also on the properties that we acquire, and for our own construction financing. Uh, before that, my early career, I started off at Deloitte & Touche in New York City, uh, reverse engineering and structuring securitizations. But enough about me, let's talk about Don Wenner. He is the founder and CEO of DLP Capital. Um, as you can see from the lovely picture of him and his family, his wife Carla, his three sons, Donnie, Alex, and Jake. Uh, just a wonderful dad. Uh, Don is not only a great CEO, a great mentor to me and many of us here at DLP, but he's also just a great person in general. And it's quite incredible the career he's had. As you can see from the picture, he's a young man, 39 years old, uh, is going to be uh, doing wonderful things, I think, for many, many years to come. But he's already accomplished a lot. He's uh, done over $10 billion in real estate transactions. Uh, more than half of that now in making loans in the real estate industry, so debt funds. Uh, he's also authored two books. The first he wrote a few years ago called Building an Elite Organization, which goes through the uh, execution and how we run the company, the operating system of how to scale and grow a high growth, high profit organization. And then he also followed that up with a book for individuals called Building an Elite Career. Don is just a great person and has led us now to over 18 years of growth in the company, 50% year over year. We've now made the Inc. 5000 officially for 12 years in a row. DLP is a private financial services and real estate firm focused on transforming lives through the building of thriving communities. And you're gonna hear us talk a lot about that, which is really when you think about impact investments, uh, that is what you're trying to do, is you're trying to build thriving communities. And we do that in three main ways. We do it by first and foremost, acquiring existing real estate communities to improve them for our investors and our residents. Uh, we also build brand new workforce, attainable housing from the ground up. Uh, and then lastly, we lend to other real estate operators that do the same thing, that are looking to build thriving communities on their own. Um, this is our uh, senior executive team, our leadership team by, uh, led by Don Winter, uh, and then our CFO, Bob Peterson, who's been with the company now for over eight years, and Pam Linden, our chief legal officer, and a bunch of other great folks that you'll see, great team with a lot of good experience, uh, many folks with over 30 years of experience uh, behind them on the leadership team, including myself. I run the, again, the Structured Finance and Capital Partners Departments. And what we do in one sentence is we finance the building of thriving communities. Again, we do that through private debt and equity funds, making an impact in the rental housing community, particularly the attainable workforce housing space. And again, we do this while returning double digit returns and not taking concessionary returns, which is a fallacy. Most people think if you're gonna make impact investments, you have to take lower returns to be able to make that impact. That is incorrect. You can do well 
while doing good in the community. So again, what is impact investing, right? It's looking at generating a positive, measurable social and environmental impact alongside a financial return. Now, I wanna pause for a second and say, there is misnomer out there uh, in the ESG space um, that's become pretty much a four, not three letter, but four letter word, um, just because folks look at it and say, what are we really doing? This is not ESG, right? What we're talking is making a tangible impact in people's lives, building thriving communities. And we're doing that through, again, the housing that we're providing, um, but also within the enrichment programs and the financial literacy and all of the other things we do within the communities that we build, that we buy, in order to help, again, build those thriving communities. And we do that all while offering double-digit returns to our investors. What is impact investing and who's investing in this space, right? You have a broad array of different uh, fund managers, financial institutions, and that goes from individual investors, family offices, again, registered investment advisors. You have non-government offices and religious institutions, as well as private foundations, endowments, um, pension funds, and insurance companies, all looking in the alternative asset space, looking at making impact investments. And the elements, what are the most important things? First and foremost is the intentionality. And we're gonna talk about our intentionality as we look at affordable workforce housing, right? That attainability is really measured by the average area median income for us. We look at having our rents be no more than 30% of the average median income. So that is uh, a definable intentional way. Plus, we want to produce more housing, right? The investments, we want to make sure you have a great return, right? It's an investment with a return expectation. And again, they could be different types of uh, expectations. And then having that impact, you're able to measure it. So for us, that measurability, as I said, is really going out there and being able to show that our rents are affordable for the everyday working family and that it will remain affordable. So. Impact investing is becoming a very popular uh, commodity in the industry today because the market is tremendous. I mean, we're talking over one trillion in investable assets across all of the private spaces. Again, most of that coming in real estate. You also have a lot of demand. So if you look at today, 84% of investors are interested and wanna make a difference through investing in impact investments. 98% of all current investors increased their investments in the following year, and nearly half of them are invested in impact investments. However, that is uh, unfortunate because a third of the investors have said that their advisors have not mentioned impact investing to them. So why is that so? Why is it that registered investment advisors aren't really promoting alternative investments or impact investments? And a lot of that has to do because of how they earn their income and the assets that they manage, but every portfolio should have some level of impact investing in them. So let's get into a little bit of the differences between what some people think of as real estate deals or syndications versus a real estate fund. And the main difference, right, when you think about deals, deals are gonna be very specific to a single asset. Uh, and we see that a lot in syndications. Um, while there's a lot of potential for upside in a single property, there's a tremendous amount of risk and downside potential. Uh, and unfortunately, I you know, speak with a lot of investors every day, all week long, and I get so many folks tell me how they lost all their money because a property went bad. So that's the biggest and single biggest risk you have is while there's again, potential for outsized returns, you're taking on a tremendous amount of risk. Um, and again, there's no diversification. All of that is in there. It's hard to achieve scale because for you to invest uh, and get some diversification, you'll have to continue to invest in single properties and putting a lot of money into them, which is a high degree of risk. Uh, on the contrary, real estate funds are very diversified pools of assets, pools of properties that, again, give you that geographic distribution in multiple locations, give you the diversification of the portfolio. If you have a single property that goes bad for any reason at all, the impact 
is very negligible on the overall return of the fund as long as the fund has substantial assets. And again, this is a great way to mitigate your risk while still enjoying the benefits of being in real estate uh, through the passive investments. Now, one of the biggest questions I get all the time is what's the difference between uh, investing on the debt side versus uh, in equity funds. And again, when you put them side by side, it's pretty straightforward. With equity funds, you will look at higher returns, right? Uh, that's the biggest thing. You have more upside debt funds. You're pretty much going to have a ceiling as to how much you could return in those particular funds just because there's only a certain amount of interest you can charge the underlying borrowers. And so you're inherently capped as to what those returns can be, whereas you can get outsized returns and get a lot of increase in those uh, equity funds. On an equity fund, you're gonna be junior to a debt fund, right? Whereas in the capital waterfall, and we'll show you that in a second, uh, there is gonna be a senior position in the debt fund, right? If you have debt, you come before the equity. If there was ever an issue with the loan or the underlying property, you are senior to anyone holding the debt position. So again, the debt fund is gonna be senior to equity, whereas uh, the equity will be junior to that debt. And then often the debt funds are gonna be shorter term investments. Uh, again, can go anywhere from, you know, call it six to 36 months. Whereas equity funds, you might look at those at a, you know, five year, seven year, 10 year horizon for a holding period. And then tax reporting is very different where you have a 1099, it's all ordinary income. Uh, versus your equity fund where you have K-1 and you can have some additional tax benefits. So debt funds, um, what specifically uh, are the characteristics of the debt funds? So again, typically these are gonna be loans that are made on a short-term basis, bridge loans to the sponsor and operator, basically not a direct primary mortgage that you or I would take on our primary residence. These are gonna be business purpose loans, loans made to an entity for the investment in real estate. Many of these loans are gonna be either for land acquisitions, for uh, development, construction projects, or to buy existing properties to renovate them and improve them. Uh, these are typically the loans are gonna be senior secured, meaning you're taking back a first lien mortgage on these properties. Um, some of them can be second lien, third lien, so you wanna do your diligence. Um, DLP does offer two different uh, forms of debt funds, one for just first lien senior secured only, the other that does subordinate debt, mezzanine debt, as well as any kind of prep equity. But again, that's the, the primary purpose is your lending to a real estate operator. Again, short-term lending. And then how do they work? Most of these are really loans that pay on a monthly basis. Sometimes they're structured as interest only payments with all the principal due at the end. Um, many of them have reserves that are funded up front. Uh, if there's construction involved, there's gonna be holdbacks for that and then released as the property continues to be constructed, there's gonna be construction draws that'll get released. Um, but the beauty is that as these loans mature, there's a lot of liquidity and a lot of payback. Um, again, most loans will pay back within 12 months. So you have a, a lot of cash velocity. And as that those loan payments come back, we can reinvest that money into new loans. So it kind of creates this perpetuated process of uh, generating great cash flow and great return for investors. Hence, they're typically gonna be more liquid in a debt fund than they are in an equity fund. You might find that you're able to get redemptions out sooner and have access to the capital sooner. With that DLP, our debt funds offer 90 day liquidity, meaning you can get out of our debt funds anytime with 90 days notice. And again, that's because of that cash velocity uh, in those particular assets. You could see here, while the debt fund is a lower risk, right? It's also gonna be a lower return versus your equity investments directly in real estate, which are gonna produce higher returns, but are taking that higher risk because you are subordinate in an equity investment to those debt investments, which will have that priority in the payment. Pros of investing in a debt fund is again, fairly liquid, short holding periods. And again, the overall strategy, you have monthly distributions from interest, you have a lot of passive income. So when I talk to investors, I look and ask, you know, what's important? Is it liquidity? Is it income? Are you looking for, you know, a longer growth 
horizon? Are you looking for tax benefits, right? If you're looking for income and liquidity, debt funds are definitely gonna be a primary asset to target. Um, and again, a fund, meaning a debt fund, can be a much better investment than just lending on your own on single properties, just because again, you're not taking that single asset risk. You have diversification in a pool of loans across the industry, across different geographic locations. Downside, again, you're gonna have lower returns. They're gonna be capped. Um, now, it doesn't mean they have to be bad returns. I mean, we're producing double digit returns. Our lending fund, for instance, has had a 10 year track record of producing monthly annualized returns greater than 10% in every period for 10 years. So again, you do not have to take concessionary returns while you're still doing good and investing in impact investments. These are generally, you're not gonna have access to the property itself, right? You are a lien holder. So you're gonna limit that side of upside in the investment. You should consider debt funds, as I mentioned before. If you prioritize lower risk return over higher returns, if you're looking for more liquidity, if you're looking for a steadier income, um, those are all great reasons to investigate the debt funds. So let's switch and talk about the equity funds. So equity funds are direct investments in real estate. Now, that can be in an existing property, um, a single family home, a multifamily home, uh, and you can get into other asset classes in the commercial industry, office, hospitality, retail. We at DLP focus on the residential space and in a very particular niche on attainable workforce housing. So again, we're really being focused and disciplined of staying in that lane of providing workforce affordable housing in the industry because there's such a demand that we're going to talk about that's needed. Um, and again, these are direct investments. So you are holding, as a fund holder, you are holding a share in the fund that owns all of the properties uh, underlying the different assets. Different funds will offer great monthly or quarterly passive income. One of the things we'll talk about is making sure you're able to get a preferred return, which all DLP funds offer. Uh, again, you'll get some portion of the capital gains. So from the appreciation of the property, you can also potentially get uh, some of the tax benefits from depreciation, depending on how this fund is structured. So generally, they're gonna be higher returns than your debt funds, um, but they're gonna be longer horizons. Now, the beauty with DLP funds are that you have annual liquidity within our equity funds. Again, annual liquidity, meaning you can redeem either in whole or in part every year within our equity funds. That's not the case, so you have to investigate other equity funds. Most of them are gonna be locked out, meaning you can't get any portion of your investment out for either five years, seven years, or 10 years. Um, so that's an important factor is, again, while you're getting higher returns, you're making a higher commitment, they're usually gonna be longer term investments. And again, as we mentioned before, higher return, little more risk that you're taking in the equity funds. So the pros are, First and foremost, the higher returns, right, that you're getting, but you also have the benefit of that capital appreciation. You can also get the benefits of the tax benefits from depreciation and really time and look at your benefits of planning how you look at taxes, when you wanna take those returns, when you wanna take those capital gains. Downside of uh, equity funds, right? Typically, they're gonna have that longer redemption period. Now, the good news is with DLP funds, it's not that long, it's annual. So you can actually get out every year, but most equity funds are gonna have, again, that five, seven, 10 year type of horizon where you can't get your money out. There's gonna carry a little more risk with the investment, right? With an equity fund, you're gonna have the investment in the property. So debt is senior to you. So if anything were to go wrong, the debt gets paid first you're taking that subordinate position. However, you're hoping that you have good value within that property and that will uh, satisfy any equity needs. Um, the bigger risk comes if you're in a particular single investment like a syndication, right? That's an enormous amount of risk because now while it does have the potential for large payouts, it also has the potential for significant loss and in many cases, loss of your entire investment. So why should you consider these funds, right? You would consider equity funds if you're looking for some tax benefits, if you're looking to have, again, a longer growth rate in terms of oversized returns. Uh, I'll give you an example, our DLP housing fund, 
uh, since inception has done over 19%. It targets 10 to 12, but again, you have the opportunity for outsized returns in different markets, in different conditions if you do it well. Why do we focus on attainable housing? Again, the first and foremost thing is the demand, right? When you think of any investment, what you wanna have is supply and demand tension. And again, just investment 101, right? And in the attainable workforce housing space, there is such a chasm. I mean, just a huge gap between what's available and what the market is producing. And as much as we build, as much as we go out and invest, we can't build it fast enough. So today there exists over a 7 million unit shortage and that gap continues to grow year over year. Part of that is driven by the fact that, as you can see here, the American dream of home ownership is increasingly out of reach. Um, the annual income to afford a medium priced home in the US used to be in 2020, again, $60,000 let's call it, right? That has nearly doubled here now to 2024. So again, making it much more difficult to be able to afford to own a home. The average home sale price, right, has gone up again, four and a half percent year over year, but is at a record high at $385,000. The median mortgage payment has gone up almost 15%. That has now increased to a point where, again, it's a record high of close to $2,900 a month to be able to afford to own a home. That's the median mortgage payment, which means half of those are gonna be significantly higher and half less. So attainable rental housing offers great solutions for the affordable housing crisis, right? And it's also an attractive investment for investors. So today, the fundamentals couldn't be stronger when you look at the supply and demand gap, right? Multifamily absorption rate is at a record high. However, there's not nearly enough coming online. So while you see the occupancy rate at the end of Q2 was about 94%, the multifamily starts, right? And the permits have declined. You're seeing, you know, year over year, over 50% decline in starts. And then in permits, you have over 30% decline. So it just means that there is less and less coming on. Permits are down 6% month over month alone. So we believe that you're gonna to continue to see this constraint over the next three to 10 years and much more beyond that. And you're gonna to continue to have that supply and demand tension. So talk a little bit about the DLP investment funds and uh, the characteristics behind all our funds. We have four offerings today that I'll uh, mention to you, two debt funds, two equity funds, but all of our funds are private impact investments in attainable rental housing for working families to make sure that we keep our rents affordable and will remain affordable. And that we're, again, addressing this crisis that we're seeing, trying to make a real impact. And again, at the same time, getting great returns for you as an investor, making an impact. So all of our funds today have a preferred return, and I mean a true preferred return. We do not earn a management fee if we do not get you that preferred return. So again, we put you ahead of ourselves. You can pick up a hundred different PPMs and if you read through them, you will see that the typical structure is for the investment manager, the fund manager to get paid first and then investors, we change that around, we flip it, right? We pay investors first and then we earn our management fee. Um, all of our investments are $200,000 minimum, 100,000 for our minimum of fixed notes, However, you know, there are partnerships that we will talk about where that investment minimum can be lower. All of our funds are uh, what we call open-ended evergreen funds because of the fact that you can continue to invest in these funds year over year for the next 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, our investment strategy, these are not um, five-year maturities where you have to sell all the assets and return all the capital back to it investors, right? We used to have funds like that. They performed extremely well, but there's a lot of risk and the timing of when you have to sell assets, unwinding it, restarting a new fund. So again, we've had our DLP lending fund since 2014. It has done extremely well, perfect track record. So we've devised all of our funds, our equity funds and debt funds, all to be open-ended, uh, giving you, the investors, the benefits of that. And also the fact that you can grow in these funds, right? You can continue to invest for many, many years. Um, 
And again, time your tax if you're in an equity fund, timing of when you take those distributions. Um, we also have in our management fee, a management fee rebate structure. So the more you invest with us, you can reduce the management fee as well. We offer uh, quarterly and monthly reporting for our lending fund, right? So you constantly will get reports. So I'll give you a good example. In our lending fund, you get a monthly uh, report, you get your monthly statement, you get a monthly a tape with all of the loans and the monthly financial statement. So we're very transparent in our reporting. We're constantly communicating, giving investors all the information. And then we target above market returns. It's incredible when you look at, again, you do not have to take concessionary returns to make a true impact. So again, targeting double digit returns across all of our funds. And again, these are suitable for our accredited investors, but we also accept IRA uh, qualified money. And that could be in the form of you know traditional IRAs, Roths, uh, we take in 401ks, SEPs, you name it, all types of qualified fund. So this is a great uh, fund comparison that compares all of our investments. The top portion will give you what is common across all the investments, which we talked a little bit about. Our model is a, call it two and 20 model, our 2% management fee that gets reduced by the level of investment you have over time. And then 20% promote to us as, as the uh, fund manager, making sure that we're giving you great performance. 80% goes back to you. We do use leverage across our funds. And most importantly, you can invest through your IRA, 401k, any qualified fund. I will be happy to send this out to any of you that want to reach out to me. There's going to be a QR code at the end that you can scan to get in touch with me or any of our investor success managers. Uh, we can walk you through, but this is a beautiful way to kind of look at side by side the different characteristics of the funds, what their targeted returns are, what their redemption periods are, what kind of tax reporting method they have, and all the relevant information you would want. And then our funds, uh, I'm happy to say we've never taken a loss uh, in any of our funds ever. We have never lost a penny of investor money. Um, we have delivered double digit returns to our investors in all of our funds. We have never missed a preferred return and we have never missed a targeted return. I will tell you, last year came close in our DLP housing fund. Everybody who's in real estate knows it's a difficult, challenging market out there and it was really difficult in 2023. Our uh, fund auditor for the DLP housing fund is Cohen Resnick. And they said to us that again, the industry as a whole had a negative asset valuation. That meant that every other fund manager except for DLP saw a negative net asset valuation. Our NAV last year, while it was small, it was only 3.36%, it was positive. And that was because we did the hard work to really improve these properties, to increase the net operating income, increase occupancy, the cash flow right so it actually produced a positive return but it was the closest we've come but we're really proud of achieving a 10 percent return in an awful market uh, and as you can see from all the other returns we've done extremely well 2023 was a great year since inception we've done extremely well across all four fund offerings this is the wonderful team i get the pleasure of working with every day uh, any of us are available to speak to you about any questions you might have about impact investing, about debt funds, equity funds, about just the market in general. We're happy to talk to you, happy to talk to you about the DLP funds, set up a one-on-one, -on -one, let you know how the offerings work. Feel free to scan that QR code, set up a one-on-one -on -one with any one of us. We'd be happy to talk to you. And then I just want to finish up separate from any time we spend on the phone together, we're out in the community all the time. We do host two large events every year, one in June and one in November. Our June was fantastic where we poured into our community. Uh, that was our uh, building an extraordinary family event. All of our families went, we had over 500 people there. It was just tremendous. We have our next one coming up November uh, 6th through the 10th. That's gonna be here in St. Augustine Beach. Uh, we're gonna invite everyone to come in to talk about impact and legacy. Uh, again, impact, uh, which is a great way to look at it, not just through real estate investment, but so many other things you can do to help build thriving communities. We'll be near you sometime soon. Uh, we've got just in September and early October, uh, six different cities that we're going to be going to, including Nashville, Charlotte, Asheville, 
Las Vegas, Palm Beach, and then we're going to be heading to, uh, again, where the company was originally founded up in uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. So again, if you'd like to join us anytime, set up a one-on-one. -on -one. I appreciate you taking the time to meet with us, and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk soon. Have a blessed day.